Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. the ramble we go from now until midnight eastern daylight time ladies and gentlemen presenting larry bubbles brown hey alec yep i i dug out the old annual yeah oh the old annual Oh, you, we like to play the old you annual you got uh, i know you know tv pretty well this hmm. is uh, pretty cool the the top-rated TV shows of each season from 1950 to 1998. Oh, jeez. This would and be... Fir- uh, and you remember, the first, 1950-51, the top, the top show was... Oh, boy, I'm trying to even remember what was on then. This was like the beginning of television, basically. Yeah, this was the absolute beginning. Uh, the top show... Well, let's see, Bonanza wasn't on yet. Uh, no, although they had uh, later, they were no, the number one show for three seasons in a row. Oh well, I, you just you just gave up the. Uh, I'd say was it Gunsmoke? That did not. That came in starting in '57. Uh, they were number one for four years in a row. Oh, okay. So number one, Milton Berle. That's it, Texaco Star Theater. Okay, all righty. I had to and remember then, who was on then, you know. I remember... They had a, huh? they had a share of 61.6. I remember going down, you know, that square below Telegraph Hill. I can't remember the name of the square, where the church is on one side. And oh, Washington Square. Washington yeah. Square. Uh, on one side of Washington Square was a uh, furniture store called Fagoni and Riley. Now, how I can't remember my wife's name, but I can remember Fagoni and Riley. <laughs> And we used to go down there on Monday nights. Or was it Monday nights? Yeah, I think so. Either that or Tuesday night. I think it wasn't he Mr. Tuesday night? Yeah, Tuesday night. And they had a TV set in the window with a speaker outside, and they were running the Milton Burl show, and maybe 50 people were around this window watching Milton Burl. And that was, wow. that was my first real exposure to television. And uh, we didn't get our first TV set till we moved to Marin, till we moved to San Anselmo, as a matter of fact. So a couple of years, maybe about a year later, a couple of years later, we, uh, uh, we had our first TV set. And I remember we had to have an antenna that was 20 feet tall. <laughs> because we were over Marin. We had to get this wimpy signal coming out of San Francisco. You know, and, and not every station came in perfectly because... We didn't get a tenor rotor. Remember the tenor rotors? Do you ever remember those? No. These were rotors, motors that were on the antenna, so you could turn the antenna so it could go to where it got the best signal. And um, um, uh, so I didn't get the best signal there. We, we got some stations came in great, and others were not as great. And you, do you remember ghosts on TV sets? The what? Ghosts. Oh yeah, yeah, the shadows. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, then I'm you're not, I'm not that much older than you if you remember ghosts. No, and they, it's uh, they, what? Uh, well, I, God, we had ghosts. I, we had such shitty TVs in our family. In the sixties, we had ghosts. So. Yeah. Uh, how much did it? How much did a TV cost then? Oh boy, we got us. Uh, our first TV set was a Traveler. Don't ask. I never heard of that. <laughs> My parents never went for the big names, you know. They could have got an RCA or a Magnavox or something like that. But no, they got a Traveler. I think it was a house brand for, like, Monkey Wards or something. I don't know. But anyway, so we got that. And um, uh, supposing, as opposed to having a click knob, it actually had a tuner on it. So that you could tune in. Uh, but anyway... Um, 
It cost, God, I don't know how much it cost. I have no idea. A couple hundred bucks, you know? Which was huge back then. Yeah. But if you had a TV set, you had a lot of new friends in the neighborhood. You know, they'd all, <laughs> all come over and watch it. And my father bought it so he could watch the fights on Friday nights. My father, Those are big, apparently. My, well, you know, things like wrestling and boxing and so on were uh, the main attractions of TV in those days because they were cheap to produce. Mm -hmm. You just went in with one camera, set it up in a, uh, with a ring, and let two guys go in there and beat the brains out of each other. My father was a very gentle man. He wasn't violent at any level, but every Friday night he'd sit there <laughs> watching these fights and yelling, go get him, hit him, hit him, hit him. <laughs> and I said to him one day, I said, Dad, you know, you're such a gentle person, and yet you watch this absolutely violent sport. Why? And he said, I watch it because I like to see two guys get into the ring and beat each other's brains out and be glad I'm not one of them. <laughs> so that's the reason he watched Bob. But he loved his boxing, pre pre uh, presented by Pabst Blue Ribbon Beer. Pabst, okay. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. And, uh, and I read that in 1950, Burl got, NBC gave him a 30-year contract for 100000 a year. Yep. Yep. Which was huge money then. Yeah. Most of which he didn't even have to work for. No, I think his show was done in by 54 or so. Yeah, and they, they just went, uh, hey, well, I think that was to keep him. Yeah. You know, to keep him doing a couple more seasons of the Texaco Star Theater. But he never had anything as successful as that. No, that was it. Mainly because he was the only thing on. Yeah, so it's all about timing. You know, I mean, uh, there, there were no other people. There were a lot of people who wouldn't even go into TV. Uh, because it, they considered it a career killer. And these were people who were in radio. So uh, uh, eventually, when Burl became a success, then a lot of people saw the potential in that. And I think the next big show after Burl maybe had to be Lucy. I love Lucy. It's uh, number one for four out of the next five years. Oh, really? Oh, so mm -hmm. he came on right after Burl. So was Burl only number one for a year? He was number one for a year, then Arthur Godfrey's Talent Scouts. Oh, boy. Then I Love Lucy, and they, uh, the one year they weren't number one was a $64,000 question. Yeah. I used to do, we'll get to that in a second, I used to do an impression of Arthur Godfrey. <laughs> and I don't know if I can do him anymore, but it was something like this. <laughs> and... Um, he used to have an announcer named Tony Marvin. How do I remember this crap? God, I can't remember See, my social security. We, we remember like really old names, but someone we met yesterday, we won't remember. Oh, forget it. Name. Forget it. So, uh, like there's this British actor who does this show, Britannia, and every week I have to look up his name again, you know, because I, I just forget it. But Tony Marvin, I remember, and he was a guy always wearing a white suit, I think, on he had this very deep voice, and I always did my impression of Arthur Godfrey and Tony Marvin laughing. Okay? So mm -hmm. Burl would find something funny, and then he'd go, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> And Marvin would go, ha, 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 ha. And, uh, 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 that was, That's my Tony Marvin, uh, Arthur Godfrey impression. Thank well, you. how did Godfrey, how did he get in it? Was he from radio? He was radio, yeah. Okay. Yeah, they, he had the Arthur Godfrey show. And then for quite a few years, he was on every day on CBS, the Arthur Godfrey show, but that was simply a camera set up as he was doing the radio show. So it really played out like a radio show on television. You know, people would come up to the mic and start singing, you know. He had a boy singer named Julius La Rosa that was famously fired on the air because uh, Godfrey felt he had lost his humility. 
And that was the beginning of the end of, of Godfrey because everybody loved Tony uh, uh, Julius La Rosa. Thought he was a sweet little boy. How could uh, how could he, he fired him on the air? Yeah, <laughs> he said. By the way, I want to tell you, he, he got through singing his song, and he uh, uh, Godfrey said, "I just wanted to tell you, that's the last song you're going to sing on this show." Wow. And he said, uh, "Thank you for being with us, and uh, we'll see you in your next career." Um, really? <laughs> not crazy. like that, not like that. I, I embellished it, but basically he just fired him on the air. Famous for firing him on the air. And he, it was a total gobsmack to La Rosa, who didn't figure that was even in the cards because he was so big on that show. Yeah. Yes, folks, there were national gossip things going on back in those days. And the firing of Julius La Rosa was front page news, you know. And so that ended both our careers. Well, no, Godfrey kept going for a couple of years, but he just, everybody began to see that he was really, where he had presented himself, he, his whole career was based on, uh, uh, on being the nice guy, okay, mm -hmm. the lovable guy. All of a sudden, he's being looked at as, as a mean guy. <laughs> and so he lost his stock and trade. Do you ever remember that movie, uh, Face in the Crowd, with Andy Griffith? I saw it a long time ago, yeah, where he was a country bumpkin nice guy and was a horrible person. <laughs> well, he wasn't a nice guy. He was just a country bumpkin who had a very winning way about him on the air and was really a mean, nasty, horrible yeah. person off the air. That was kind of based on Godfrey. Okay. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. Yeah. Also, the only time... Andy Griffith did a creditable acting job, but yeah, uh, he was good in that. Oh, he was that, terrific uh, in that. And now we're going through uh, someone we know is going through that same problem right now. Who, who's that? What do you mean? Ellen. Ellen. Oh yes, yes. Well, I remember Ellen as kind of nice, you know. I mean, she did my, I think she did the Frost Amphitheater with us, and I. She. Uh, hmm? she did, I'll tell you what she she did. Uh, yeah, she did do that. I, yeah, the I don't think it was your show. I did a show at the Stone in Palo Alto with her and yeah. Valentine's Day of '86. And was she nice then? She was. Not, I just remember she was nice. She was a little neurotic, but I don't well, recall her as being mean at what all. What comedian isn't a little neurotic? Yeah. So yeah. So I had nothing out of the norm. Yeah, uh, but uh, she uh, she was. Uh, you know, I mean, I liked her. I thought she was very nice. I only met her on that one occasion and wrote her a check, and she left. You know, mm -hmm. uh, but I found her nice and cooperative, and you know, willing to please. You know. Well, she was here for a couple of years and then moved to L.A. and got huge. And yeah, yeah. Then well, maybe that changed her. I don't know. But it's uh, pretty... Well, when she, like you know... Not pleasant to work for, apparently, from what these people are saying. I remember saying on the air, we were in San Francisco, which was largely gay, and I, I kept... I said once on the air, I said, you know, if Ellen would only come out of the closet, she would help a lot of gays and the perception really? of being homosexual. <laughs> yeah. That this nice woman is gay, and and a few months later, they the whole thing went down, and she came out, and she, you know, it, it didn't help her career at the time, but it did help the perception of of homosexuals in America. So I think mm -hmm. she did a very good thing then. Um, and uh, but now, you know, I mean, come on, you get popular. I'll tell you, uh, Shecky was saying to me the other day, he says, you remember Dave and his problems with the uh, intern, right? It really right. was an intern. It was his assistant. Um, Stephanie Burkett, I think, was her name. See, I remember names. Uh, he said, if that had happened today, Dave would be off the air. Absolutely, yeah. I'm, I'm kind of surprised he made it through with because it wasn't that long ago. But well, what he did is he headed, today it, for sure. headed it straight on. He didn't want this guy... Um, uh, 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 what do you call it? Being, a, a black, being blackmailed, blackmailed by, I forget who the guy yeah. was. Didn't want to be blackmailed by this guy, so he just came out with it. Said, forget it. You know, I'm having you arrested, and I'm going to announce it to the audience. And he did it in a very, very straightforward manner and literally cut the whole thing at the knees. All right? So, uh, but, uh, one more quickly, uh, one, one more year. What? 
Okay, I'll tell you from uh, from fifty seven to sixty seven, ten years. There were eight eight of those years. The the top shows were westerns. Okay, so I'd I'd say Gunsmoke, uh, Bonanza, and uh, gee, I don't know what were the other and one. One year Wagon Train. Wagon Train, of course. I forget Wagon Train, but it was a big and, big. And show. the only two that weren't two years that weren't westerns were the Beverly Hillbillies. Oh, okay. Which was, as, as I recall, a pretty bad sitcom. Yeah, really bad sitcom. Hey, listen, we've run out of time, but keep that almanac because, you okay, know. Okay, you, we'll, you got those pretty good. We'll come back to them. We'll come yeah. back to them. We're talking about shows, folks, that nobody in our audience ever heard of. <laughs> and we're talking with Larry. We live in the past. Uh, and we're talking with Larry Bubbles Brown, a comedian nobody's ever heard of. So uh, <laughs> it's a theme show today, and of course, a radio host who very few people have ever heard of. So I'm Alex Bennett. That's Larry Bubbles Brown, and this has been Gunsmoke. Thank you, Larry. Thanks, Alex. Larry Bubbles Brown, ladies and gentlemen. Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, welcome back. Uh, it's uh, it's, uh, it's uh, the rest of our show. So far, there's nobody waiting to come on. So uh, I, I, I could sit here and just uh, ad lib for the next uh, hour, okay? Oh well, uh, of course we got Charlie Wallace. Charlie's always, always there. He's the first one on. Uh, he's ready, and raring to go with the uh, with the with the citizen panel. Hello there, uh, Charlie. How are you? Doing pretty good. Yep. Tell us, uh, give us a report from Texas. What's what's the? Oh, we've got a new record for deaths in one day. Uh, Three hundred and seventy-six deaths today. Three hundred. How many? 376. So that's 100 times more than we had here in New York City, in New York State. Wow. That's 100 times more. We only had three today. And we had two oh, yesterday. Man. And we had two yesterday. And, no, and uh, wait, wait a minute. Let me, let me, yeah. two yesterday. And also we now, we have our lowest infection rate ever. It like the lowest before was six seven point six seven. Now it's point six two percent. So, uh, and in three weeks we have not gone over one point zero in infection rate. How's that, folks? Sounds like a dream. And by the way, don't come to New York because it's healthy. Okay, please stay <laughs> away. Stay away. Stay in your infected state. Please leave us alone. How's it going over there in uh, in uh, in in your neck of the woods, Robert? Is the uh, infection rate up a little bit? Because pretty much, it's pretty much followed in lockstep with New York, uh -huh. actually. Yeah, because the three states—New York, uh, Connecticut, and and uh, and and New Jersey—all kind of work together Connect. to whip yep. this thing. Yeah. What a concept. Yeah, what a concept. Uh, people act now. Somebody's been trying to call in here, called Bob Q K. And I don't know who he is, so let me let's see if I have to get rid of him really fast, okay? Let's see here, um, Bob Q K. Who could it, it could be somebody we know, you know? Uh, hold on a second. Uh, he's supposed to be joining, but he's not. So if he's not going to join, uh, I am going to uh, I'm going to get rid of him. I'm going to remove him. Uh, let me see here. Uh, well, I can't even get rid of him. So, ha, hmm. da, da, da. we'll wait to see what happens with him. Hmm. Um, I should be able to get rid of him, but I can't. Oh, there he goes. He went away on his own. All right. Yeah. Okay, good. 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 Well, I was going to tell you. What, what are you going to tell me, Jeff? My daughter lives in Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. She actually works at the university there. Mm-hmm. In the medical school. Yeah. But besides that, we tried to go up to Maine yeah. for a little weekend trip. Yeah. And we were able to do it. Mm -hmm. In Massachusetts, they wouldn't let you go. Oh. oh. Unless you got yourself re-injected and all of this stuff. 
-hmm. And by the time you could do it, you couldn't go. Wow. And then you couldn't come back. It was very strange. Look, we Bob QK, who I didn't know who that was, is actually Kathleen. Hello, Kathleen. Oh wow. Yeah. Isn't 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 Zoom easy to use? She just froze on us. <laughs> First person ever to freeze on Zoom, ladies and gentlemen. She froze on us. There we go. Where are you, by the way? You're not in. You're not in. You're upstate now, right? At home. Oh, you're still in. Uh, in where? Tracy or Tracy. Oh boy, Tracy. You, you've got some bad. Uh, uh, I am in Tracy. Yeah. You've got you got bad Wi-Fi. Can you move? Uh, can you move closer to your? Is it off? Huh? Can... My Wi-Fi is bad. Is she, like is he, is he using something Africa. while you're doing something? Wait a minute. Listen to me. Is he, is your son doing something while you're listening to us? Just you're downloading porn or anything? <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's making coffee. Oh, he's making coffee because you're freezing up for some reason. Like you don't have enough yeah. bandwidth or something. See? Oh, there we go. He's making coffee. You know what? He doesn't want to ever be seen, right? I haven't seen Can Kathleen. you hear us okay? For You're having trouble, aren't you? No. Are you having trouble? What else is frozen too? Really? That's. I think that's you. I think you've got a bad signal. Yeah. Nobody. Yeah. Everybody's why, okay. Why, why don't you? Are you on a? Are you on a laptop? Are you on a? Yes. Laptop? Why don't you move your laptop closer to wherever your Wi-Fi is? Fuck! I'm right next to it. Oh really? Oh well. <laughs> <laughs> then you. Then you're really up shit creek. <laughs> I'm gonna have to blow the Wi-Fi. I'm sorry. <laughs> now, now you're okay. Now, now you. Now you, wait a minute. Now, now, you're <laughs> now you're not. I haven't pretty, changed. Yeah, she, nah, that's she beautiful. hasn't changed. I've, and, and she's very good at blowing Wi-Fi. To be honest <laughs> with you, it was one of your <laughs> better talents. <laughs> Why is she having an issue connected? Huh? I said if she's good at blowing <laughs> Wi-Fi, why is she having such an issue connected? <laughs> I'm sorry, you just left, you both left yourself wide open for that. Yeah, well, now, now it's kind of, now it's kind of working better. Maybe that's what it needed to be relieved. <laughs> you know, <laughs> whatever works. Yeah, yeah. Well, this show won't get monetized tonight. That's for damn sure. No chance. Anyway. Money's not the only form of exchange. So I started, Clearly, using, the I, start, I started using an antibiotic in my eye that I still had a bottle of, and it's gotten better. I can oh. now see okay. Uh, and I'd get to my eye doctor, but he's all the way downtown, and I don't want to have to go down there because that's a Petri dish. <coughs> anyway, how's everything? How's everything? And you're in, you're in uh, I'm trying to remember where you live now exactly. The town is. Me? Uh, yeah, Tracy. 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 Tracy, well, we're not on fire. That's a good yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. Is there smoke there? Is there it smoke? came very close. Mm -hmm. Yeah, another mm -hmm. Californian. How was uh, yeah. how was the COVID treating you? Well, luckily I didn't get it. Yeah. You know I was all masked up. Yeah. Did you did you keep yourself and Junior in the house? Yeah. You know I ended up leaving Costco because my hours went from. You know, I was considered part time, so I worked like thirty five hours, which mm -hmm. lasted like a week into my employment. Then I was working 50, and then from March on, it was 72 hours. Mm, yeah, but then what happened? Well, trying to pack up a house and working 72 hours doesn't quite gel. Well, wait a minute. Packing up a house. So you are moving. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay, because I thought you had moved already, and that's why we hadn't no. heard from you, because you're moving to upstate California, which doesn't have Internet service, I don't think, do they? No, it does. <laughs> I'm kidding you. You're very funny. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but we haven't heard from you in a while, and I guess it's because of all the work and the moving and oh, the, yeah. everything <laughs> like that. Because we've missed you. Oh, thank you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Especially anybody who come on here and blow their Wi-Fi is just you know okay in our book. <laughs> you know, that's the closest thing we've had to porn on this show is blowing your Wi-Fi. Anyway, um, uh, Brian Ludwig is with Hi. us tonight. Uh, uh, Brian, uh, the other Brian. Uh, Brian with uh, 68 days to vote, 
and uh, Robert Natalie's here, and Charlie's hey. here, and Jeffrey Stein's here. And hello, Josh. How are you? Good. How are you? Did you watch any of the Republican Love Fest? <laughs> no, not for me. <laughs> I mean, you didn't watch any of it? You, you weren't even curious about it? Uh, I mean, they don't start doing that stuff until 9 o'clock at night. Yeah. I I'm, get up at 4.30 in the morning. I'm not staying up until 11 o'clock and sleeping for four or five hours. So yeah. I, can listen well, sorry, I, 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 don't, I, I don't wish horrible <laughs> things. I don't wish horrible things on people, but just with a raise of hands, how many here hope right. those at least 1,000 people that were there watching the speech all come down with COVID? <laughs> yes, that's perfect. Because those morons weren't wearing masks. Oh, they deserved. They it. were within. They were. They. They were they like were right two two inches day. from each other. Yeah. You know. Did you Did you see the green screen? No. Melania's <laughs> ma malaria's dress was green malaria. screen. <laughs> so so Colbert and all these people they they put all this stuff. They put like the flames burning from the riot on her and everything. <laughs> oh, oh, God, whatever. Whoever told her to wear that is in big trouble. Never wear a color you can chroma key. Never. And they had Biden and Harris 2020. Yeah. In case people don't know what we're talking about, chroma keying is if, if, if I had a green screen in back of me, I could then chroma key myself onto the green screen, put something on the green screen in back of me. So if she was wearing like a green dress or a, it could be a red dress or it could be a blue dress. They could chroma key stuff on there, like porn, for instance. Well, remember the blue screen at the old apartment? You had that ring around the yeah, camera. Yeah, I had a blue screen. Yeah. yeah. Uh, 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 yes, uh, uh, Brian, you have your hand up. Yeah, I was just going to say, regarding, with the exception of California, of course, uh, people like uh, Charlie Wallace and those who live in Florida and whatnot, they're basically witnessing an unraveling of 160 plus years of a philosophy of self-absorption and hyper-individualism and selfishness yeah. unravel before they're very, unfortunately for people like Charlie and Jack Bishop and Amy, even, they are uh, caught in the uh, crosswinds of that nonsense. So, you know. Well, I mean, um, I, I, don't, I don't know. It, look, there's always been a problem, but I don't know if it's as bad as it's been in the last, say, 25, 30 years. We've got more selfish and more selfish and more selfish, you know. Uh, there was some sense when I was growing up, at least, that politicians felt they had to do something for the public in general, and it wasn't a cross-party. It's... They crossed party lines to get things done for for the public. Well, uh, regarding that, being that this is a representative republic, uh, those p politicians who have become obviously more selfish over the years, isn't that not a direct reflection of how selfish we most oh, most of us have become? Oh, we've become a very selfish society. I think. We, anybody disagree with that? You know, Ch Josh, hmm. you, do you agree with that or disagree with that? That we've become more and more selfish, or that we've always been selfish? What's the I don't know. I mean, Americans, I guess, go their own way. I mean, there's yeah. certainly more disagreement here maybe than in other countries. So I, I don't know if I'd describe it that way. I don't know. Yeah, I was thinking before we went on the air tonight about how mad I am, actually, at just everything the way it is right now, and the way it's become, and what what Americans have allowed it to become. I mean, after all, this guy is in office because somebody voted for him. You know, and um, uh, the fact that you had a bunch of gutless Republicans who wouldn't like take him to task for what he was doing, because he ruined, he's ruined their party. There's no question about it. You know, the Republican Party is going to have to do a lot of a lot of mea culpas after this is over with. If uh, if Trump loses. did he ruin it or did he peel off the mask? I think he ruined it. I I think here's what happened. He's an asshole. He does asshole. Th he does asshole things. There are Republicans who fall into lockstep because they feel the party has to stick together uh, and and get behind their whatever leader was chosen for them, irregardless of what he does. You know, and and so here you have all these people like Mitch McConnell going, "Oh, look how right he is and how terrific he is." Look. I, I, I don't like Mitch, but he's not stupid. But he's standing up for stupid. And that's amazing, you know? So, 
I but I'm just I, I just was really mad tonight. I just oh, felt no. that you know oh. we Look, had. Wait, wait, wait. I didn't forget. Hey, you know, hey, 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 Kath, yeah. Kathleen. Yes, <laughs> yeah, if you're gonna talk off screen, uh, mute yourself. There's a little mute button there on 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 Zoom that make yeah so that. You know, we don't hear every... Yeah, just mute yourself when you go off screen and start talking, okay? All right? Okay. Oh, I could have muted her myself, actually. Yeah, but <laughs> anyway, I forget that. I'm not... Uh, I, have, I don't use Zoom well, okay? He might be voicing his jealousy over her blowing the Wi-Fi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I'm beating he missed it! it. <laughs> But it's working perfectly now. Yes, it is. That's Actually, good. it's working very well That's now. It's usually the case. Is, yeah. it I was say, is that how men are? They yeah. work perfectly after that happens? <laughs> <laughs> you wanted something there, Mr. Nair. Or they fall asleep. Yeah. That too. Uh, you know, uh, I just, I just, I don't know. I was just so mad about just everything. I mean, mad about the fact that, for instance, uh, this president used... Washington DC as a prop. <clears throat> you know, and that is not right. I mean, over the Washington Monument fireworks that went up and said tw fireworks that read Trump 2020. Now, should I, I that's not considered right to do. In fact, it goes against the Hatch Act because you're not supposed to be able to use any governmental office or building or monument or whatever for political purposes. And all that was yesterday. He's the White House is a political backdrop. And I just, I, I just, it made, it just, I don't know. I mean, how far are we going to let this guy go before somebody just clamps down on him? He warned us. He said that he could shoot somebody in the middle of Fifth Avenue and yeah. get away with it. And this is what he's doing. He, he's doing what he said. Yep. At least he's consistent. Yeah, and he can grab you on the pussy. Hey, did you guys scare away Phil? Uh, no, Phil scared himself away. He just, I, I, I guess he just, he just decided that he was uh, uh, not, he was going to leave the, the discussion the other night, and has not been back ever since. So. Well, that's sad. Yeah. <laughs> Who's that? Who's that, Phil? Uh, Brian. Say hi. Hi. Oh, hi. Hey. Oh, is, is that is that the wife? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. hi, how are you? Good, how are you? You produced <laughs> you produced a lovely looking daughter. Yeah. yeah. She's amazing. Thank you. She's I just won't bother you. <laughs> <laughs> I won't bother you with your friends. Oh, okay. <laughs> you and your you and your friends get to have have your little party, you know. Yeah. <laughs> One hour party every no, night. So I don't so I don't know if Phil's ever coming back i mean he hasn't been back he isn't back tonight and he hasn't wasn't back I guess two nights ago he left yeah so yeah. yeah and if that's the way he wants to be then, last time I was on then here, fine so. what the last time i was on here was when he had when you had that altercation yeah and and which was uh, two nights ago you know he had a hissy fit and decided he didn't like what was happening so um Heck. you know it was a uh uh, so he hasn't come back since, uh, you know. What the heck's going on with Ray? Yeah, what is Ray? Ray, yeah. Ray, you're in a car. What is that thing you've got? Are you there, Ray? Oh, can oh. you hear us? Can wow. you hear? Can you hear us, Ray? Yes. There, there, there. Sorry. Oh, okay. uh, oh wow. Okay. Oh, so I don't see my vid. I don't see myself. Okay. Okay. So I what? Invisible. What is that thing in the center of the screen? I have no idea. I got to take the background. I don't know why it's doing that. I have no idea. I think uh, I think it's something in. Uh, uh, oh well, and now you just left that. Okay, I don't is know what's Q going on. Is that QAnon. I think that's QAnon symbol. No, <laughs> is it really? Um, I'm jacking a smartphone. Oh, I know it's wrong. I know it's wrong. There. Well, he, now we got he Ray needs Renati. His Wi-Fi blown. Huh? He needs his Wi-Fi. Won't. Yeah, we'll send <laughs> Kathleen over to blow your Wi-Fi. I don't know what the hell's going on. Well, there is a new thing they have, and it doesn't work on mine here, but it works on my other one. And it's under it's under um, uh, background and filters. 
And it may be a filter that you have no, on. I know what's wrong. My camera wasn't plugged in. And I had this uh, snap video thing that does weird uh, icons because I was making this bit. Okay. Yeah. We're gonna see oh, you I'm sorry. Fingers. I should have prepared myself. Uh, yeah. yeah video. You, you should have prepared, but you didn't. So what the hell? Not here sure. comes here, com here comes Bree from Kuala Lumpur. Uh, he'll, have a, he'll have a he'll have a oh there He's you in a car go too. okay that's fine great okay it looks like you're on your way to a bank robbery it's really nice you know totally we all raised fine what can you see me yeah yeah why we how are you in a car that's not oh in the other one yeah that was a video running. Oh, no. no, and Bree is in a car. Bree's in a car. Oh, I'm, I'm, I was looking at the wrong one. I wasn't looking at Ray. I can see that Ray yeah. is on now, but yeah. Bree is in a car. Except I can't. Find and he's uh, he's out yeah. to he's going to rob a bank in Kuala Lumpur. Uh, and uh, well, Ray Renardi will get blamed for it. That's right. <laughs> that's right. I get blamed for everything. Yep. <laughs> okay, here comes here here comes. Uh, I, uh, John Larkin, I'm sure he's Fred Smirks tonight. Yeah. Okay, and um, he's robbing the bank right now. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, so anyway, uh, um, so I, I'm just, I was just really, I'm just really mad at at what this guy is being allowed to get away with, and his party just turns a blind eye to it, you know. And I just think there are certain people like Lindsey Graham is coming out uh, against Trump in a lot of ways lately. Oh, really? But he's but, but he look it looks like he where is he from North Carolina? I think it looks like he's going to be losing there. It's a good shot good at losing. So I think he's trying to distance himself from Trump because that's not a good position to be in, you know. Well, I think in his heart of hearts, he can't stand Trump because if you listen to all the videos before, uh, well, you know, I mean, blasts. it's just like how much longer can you can you abide by this moron with his moronic activity? What is that, Bree, that you're trying to show us? I, uh, you have to check in everywhere you go here. Oh, so, yeah. So everywhere you go, really? You check in. Yeah. Okay. And we just lost Ray Renati's picture. Uh, well, it was because Ray was in the car that I was—I felt like I could call in, Alex. No, Ray's not in the car. You're the only one. You're the only I, one who's taking out into us out into the streets of Kuala Lumpur, which is I'm back, nice. right? Yeah. I don't know what the hell's going on. Huh? Uh, blow your Wi-Fi. Just don't do anything, Ray. Just talk on the I'm show done. and forget about potching, as my mother used to say, potching around with anything. You know the term, right, Robert? Potchkey, no. you know? No. You're not Jewish? No. Boy, you sure look Jewish. You know Potchkey, right, uh, Jeffrey? He's Italian. Huh? Is that Yiddish? Potchkey. Yeah. Robert Natal. You, you Potchkey around. Robert Natal. Yeah. Hey. You, you Potchkey around. Hey. Where, where are you, Ray, in Kuala Lumpur? I'm not in Kuala Lumpur. Where are you? <laughs> I'm in Palo Alto. No, not Ray. Excuse me, Bree. Bree. <laughs> okay, good night, folks. Good Everybody night. Drink. See you later. Everybody drink. Everybody drink. Everybody drink. drink, 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 drink. Uh, uh, Ray, where? Uh, Ray. Bree. Oh, I'll oh, shut up, Ray. <laughs> Bree. <laughs> I'm getting too. Oh, my God. I'm part of the Palo. Boy, it's, you, it's, you, it's about you, a half you. hour south of San Francisco <laughs> and about a half hour north of San Francisco. Yeah, Saturday. okay, shut up, Ray. Right. Shut up. Where the fires are coming shut in. He's between Fred and I. Bree, where are you? Uh, I am in Loyat Plaza. Loyat Plaza. Okay. Yes. And uh, are people wearing masks there? Everybody is. Everybody. Well, they have to. Is uh, it no, mandatory? they don't have to. Well, no, some, you'll see uh, one or two here that don't. So what are you doing but, in, the, it looks like it's a mall. What is it, what are you doing in the mall? It's not a mall. This is, um, it's, uh, it's in, in Singapore, my, my favorite place was this place called Sim Lim Square. Mm -hmm. 
and Digital Funan uh, Digital Life Mall. So this is a digital electronics mall. Wow. So it, yeah. So it's. I'm looking for a couple of things. Um, I want to get a couple uh, video ca uh, Wi-Fi cameras to put around my house, so I can see what creatures are coming into my attic. Uh huh. Aren't you getting a little obsessed with these creatures on your attic? Well, yes, but you know, they make a lot of noise. Oh, okay. So I can't sleep very yeah. well. So I'm trying to figure that out. Hold on, a, hold, uh, hold on a second. Many thousands of miles away, Kathleen. Do you have any creatures in your attic? No. Okay. Maybe his house is haunted. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I thought about that. Yeah, maybe it, it's haunted. So I, I that's another skunk. reason why I need these cameras so I can find it. You have a By skunk. By the way, it's National Day weekend yep. here. Oh, okay, Ray has a skunk. Like we have a skunk that we have a skunk that li lives under our front deck. Does it smell? Yes, almost every night. He's very cute. Now wait a minute. Hold on Aww. a second. I've got to tell you something about Kathleen and I. This Ooh. is this is a story. This will bring Speaking back lots of memories to her. Yeah. What am I going to say about skunk smell, Kathleen? Do you remember whenever we would smell skunk, we would open the windows and breathe yeah. it in because it reminded us of good pot. Good weed. <laughs> <laughs> and we'd open the yeah. windows and go, oh, and you would call it, you had a name for it, for a skunk. What was it? Skunk. Wood pussy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She, and you would yeah, say to me, good wood pussy. That's what you would say. So that, that along with, of course, blowing your Wi-Fi. Thank uh, you. Can uh, anyway. I connect to the wrong show tonight? I'm, I'm just <laughs> I'm Where's Phil? <laughs> Phil's not here. Phil is. Uh, Phil has, I think, decided to uh, not call the show up. anymore. Is what I oh. think. I oh, don't. He'll be back. Well, said that before. you know something. Look how nice it is tonight. You know. That's why I'm here. Yeah, yeah. Because you can feel you can get a word in edgewise. Well, how? you know, people have Keep been saying we needed down. a break. <laughs> Huh? What? You know, maybe Phil need, Phil needed a break too. You know? I thought he'd come back after the convention. Well, you know, yeah, uh, you know, I mean, I, I, the show works fine anyway, you know, and I enjoy it, and I like, I like the tone that it takes. I'm not, I mean, I want somebody like Patrick. If you're out there, call because you're a Republican, okay? I don't mind politics of that I don't agree with. No, it's I'm just following. I. You know, I, I was, it got to the point, I guess what got me mad the other night was that he was just going into the same old thing again, you know. He was just okay, parroting Steve, Fox yeah. memes yeah. and, you know, okay, stuff like that. Turn, on, turn, on, turn off your mic when you're not, uh, you're not talking to us, Bree, because that would be uh, okay. helpful. But okay. you're, you're missing the action. What action? Oh, oh boy. What action? Well, you, uh, Jimmy Carter moment. What? What do you mean, a Jimmy Carter moment? Jimmy Carter moment. Lust in his <laughs> What's that? Oh, he had lust in his heart. He oh, blew Wi-Fi's too. <laughs> oh, that's uh, that, that's desserts. <laughs> I don't. Yeah, think I'm that's thinking about that chocolate truffle. Really? Yeah, I'm thinking about it. No, okay. Well, just remember, it's fattening. <laughs> it's fattening. Yeah, hey, Brian. Yeah, see, that rock space is good. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, I've got to go up higher because I've got to find the uh, uh, the, cam the uh, CCTV cameras. Oh, okay. So, uh, so that you can put them in your attic. Okay. Brian's trying to talk. Yes, Brian. Yes. Uh, regarding uh, Phil, I actually, in, it's nice to engage in verbal cerebral combat with someone like him the only problem with him the other from what i could understand was that not only was he uh, continuously and perpetually doubling down on his well ignorance when he was disproven of something but he was also uh just uh you know talking over people nonstop, more so than he usually has in the past. additionally as far as patrick is concerned i really like patrick i wish he would i was just thinking about him the last few days because 
to me, I've, I've come to understand that uh, Mr. Blazik is as much of an independently minded conservative as I am of an independently minded liberal. And Phil, if you're listening, which you probably are, um, if I can take getting ganged up by all of you neoliberal Biden supporters for uh, <laughs> claiming that I'm going to vote third party, which I will, uh, uh, Green, um, then surely you can stand being ganged up a little more uh, by uh, people who are diametrically opposed to you as well. We know what we're going to do to the Green Party, don't you? Are we talking about Boba Fett, Patrick? Yes. But, uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, but you know, you know what we're going to do with the Green Party? We're going to chroma key them. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, Good luck with that. <laughs> see, unlike uh, Pelosi and Biden, they're not going to be bought out. Yeah. Well, well, they're not going to be able to be chroma, chroma keyed or whatever you call it. And they're going to lose. Yeah. But, the, you so, know, oh, I, like, I, I think you hit the nail on the head there, Brian, when you said that, you know, the problem the problem that we have with Phil is that he, he constantly feels he has to say something on everything and other people don't talk, you know. Yeah. And and I uh, here we somebody mentioned to me last night, Jeff seems to be talking more than he normally does because Phil isn't there. You know, and, and I'm not. I haven't banned Phil from the show. I haven't told him he can't come back on. It's his <laughs> choice. You know, and I like Phil. Huh? In all honesty. What? I mean, I, I like most of the. Like I said well, two years ago, regarding uh, and I was going through a, like a bad. Uh, I was dealing with somebody. I was like in the process of dating or whatever. Mm -hmm. I said I'd rather. I remember saying this in October 2018. This is how my mind works. Um, that uh, I'd rather deal with a hundred fills than a hundred of the asshole that I was uh, having in. Well, having a uh, yeah, it, that's only political. But the other night, I just got very frustrated with the fact that we were just getting more of the same. It was the same talking points over and over again. You don't have to say them over and over again, Phil. Do you know what I'm talking about, Robert? Well, he's in a cult. Yeah, yeah. I, I have no trouble with Phil personally. I think he's got a, a heart somewhere in there that. He doesn't always show, but my objection to Phil is more the fact that he deals with what he says as if it's the truth that we all need to know and that yeah. there's no alternate opinion or that there's no other side to the issue. Yeah. Yeah. And I just wish he could engage back and forth and maybe we could learn something. But I, I don't want to get into a discussion about Phil because one night I defended Phil on, on Jack's show because... Yeah. They, they were going after Phil on that show, and I phoned him up, and I said, you know, really, you shouldn't go after somebody who isn't here to defend himself. So yeah. uh, I, I don't really want us to talk about Phil in any negative fashion if he's not here to defend himself, you know? Yeah, well, but we're not talking in a negative. We're just talking. Yeah. That's the difference. I'm just, know. I'm just saying that I was very frustrated the other night. And all I did was I said, "Okay, go ahead, Phil. Just continue. I can't listen to this." And I took my earphones out, and he went. Oh, and I'm Facebook. leaving. I hope to continue to be friends with him on Facebook. So you, I don't want any. Trying to help him out, we should do an intervention. You know, he's in a cult. Okay. Yeah, he's in a cult. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Yes, Ray. My own father. Well, I just want to say something positive about Phil because I know Phil outside of this, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. he is one of the most gracious. Uh, helpful generous people i know mm -hmm. he is uh he definitely is. i agree he will he will help you with personal yeah. issues he will buy stuff for you mm -hmm. he will give you rides uh the guy he he's a really nice guy i remember he, you said that before ray and i believe you person like trump yeah yeah so, so i mean no so well, yeah. you know a lot of it it it's um that you if if you if you have certain beliefs and you stick to them there is a comfort in that you know if you're constantly uh deciding or changing things you could get lost there so sounds like a cult uh well i yeah, as i say for, as i say what got to, all of yeah. life is a cult what got to me the other night was and just completely frustrated me is he was just saying the same thing again you know, it wasn't like something that was new. It wasn't some original idea. It was just the same old, same old. And I just was very frustrated by that. I didn't tell him to go away. I didn't even tell him to shut up. I just said, I don't want to listen to this. And I pulled out my earphones and I threw them down. I said, you go talk, say whatever you want to say. But I just don't want to have to listen to it. 
And he got upset by that. He got into a hissy fit, and he's gone away, and now he hasn't come back because he had a hissy fit. Uh, I, nobody's kicked him off the show. Nobody's told him not to come back, you know. Uh, <laughs> quite frankly, to be honest with you, uh, I think I lose listeners on this show because of Phil rather than gain them. But I'm willing to take that risk because I like this to be an open forum. And I like Phil it, it, to add to the mix with his, his opinions. But not the same thing over and over and over again and talking points from, right. from, from Trump. Yes. Rather than defend Trump out of a rational way, he's, he's watching Fox and seeing what they say and he's coming back and repeating it here. You know, and I just, you know, I was just very tired of that. And I also wasn't feeling well last that night. And so I wasn't ready to take any crap from anybody. Charlie. Yeah, speaking of cults, did you, uh, one night that woman, I think she was evangelical, she was uh, speaking and she was saying how she thought we should go back. You know, it's the hundredth anniversary of, of the women getting the vote. Mm -hmm. She wanted to go back to one vote for family, and the man got to make that vote. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that the what? one? That what, what was this? I, I don't. I, what were you, I, I, I don't get what you're talking about, Charlie. I'm that, that that sounds like a cult to me. This one woman uh, spoke at uh, the Republican convention. I just got one. Yeah. That, well, that, one guy just tried thinks to that we ought to get rid of. Everybody My voting God. and just have one vote per household. Oh, and hold on a second. Hold on a second. Vote. Bree, turn yes. off your mic, please, if you're going to talk to other people, because Charlie was trying to say something, and you were kind of going over. I crush you. Yeah, anyway, go ahead. No, well, something unusual happened that shouldn't have happened. That care. guy tried to shake my hand. Oh, well, that is That's actually good. illegal now, I think. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, okay. All right, anyway. I, see, you see, I'm the only foreigner here, so they like, they're constantly trying to get my attention. It's like, I know what I want. I just want to peacefully go where I go. Yeah. And I hate it because they always see white guy must have money, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When we uh, were at the, when we were at the, we were at the, the uh, Great Wall in China, uh, Chinese tourists were coming up to us and wanted to take pictures, selfies with the two Americans. <laughs> Pretty <laughs> I mean, cool. Yeah. Um, be, being white there is not something you see every day of the week. Uh, Kevin, how you doing? You've been quiet tonight. You, uh, in fact, you're, 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 it says, don't want to say as your name tonight. What, what don't you want to say? My That's name. Oh. oh, I <laughs> see. <laughs> that was easy. Uh, oh. Okay. No, I'm doing fine. How are you? Yeah, good. Hi, uh, and and how are the fires doing where you are? They're coming down a bit. Yeah, still burning, but they're coming down a little bit. We still get a lot of smoke when the wind changes, but we're yeah. getting. They're going down. They're up to close to fifty percent now. So yeah. Now Kathleen over in Tracy, you didn't have any uh, any fires there. Oh no, we did. It came right up to the freeway, and at one point, one of my cars was in the shop. And the other one has been on a non-op, so I had to uh, charge the battery and get it all fired up because I thought, shit, you know, if it jumps the freeway, yeah, you know, we're gonna have to bolt, but it never did. So yeah, okay, so you're 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 okay, you're safe. And who else yeah. is in California that's here? It says uh, unhealthy for sensitive groups. Okay, that's the that's the says the yeah. air quality. And how Airport. and how is that in your area there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the, the last two nights were clear, but uh, today got a little smoky today. So and, maybe like and, like Kevin's saying, the winds changed. And John yeah. Larkin, you don't get. Plus, they're doing you, you, a lot of backfires. Oh, no, I um, we get a lot of smoke up here from the uh, the Napa area from the fires up oh, there. Yeah. Yeah. And then there's the fires down in Big Basin. By Santa Cruz, so we're right in the middle. But you don't have to worry about the actual fires because no, uh, you're, no. you're San Francisco is basically concrete. Yeah. <laughs> so you know. Park from fires. <laughs> yeah, and and I mean you could burn down uh, Golden Gate Park, but nobody would miss it. Actually, we just had a huge fire over south of Market in the Mission. Really? It was an old 
bunch of old warehouses caught on fire. Well, you oh, know yeah. what you what yep. you did have that I saw on TV, and it scared the crap out of me, was the Golden Gate Bridge being hit by lightning. I think in the uh, whole uh, time yep. that I've ever lived in the Bay Area, and that was a considerable amount of time, I, I, yeah. I never saw the Golden Gate Bridge hit by lightning. Did you ever see that, Kathleen? No, never. Never. How about you, Brian? You've never seen no. it. Never seen that. And I thought it, it got hit quite often. Yeah, no, not not that I remember growing up. I've been well, across not, that bridge maybe, maybe in my lifetime, two thousand times. Know, it probably did, but we don't have as many cameras back in those days as we do now. You know? Yeah, could be. Could I think be. a lot of these bridges do this. Also, the Bay Bridge, I think, got hit too with lightning, didn't it? As well. Yeah. I wouldn't doubt it. Got lightning rods on them, so. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So but anyway, then we don't get lightning a lot either. You know, it, it's like the whole world is come. It's like the apocalypse. I mean, we got we got we got f fires. We got lightning. We've got uh, uh, earthquakes. A, a, a virus. Slowly but surely, uh, I told you, Alex. It'll it, it, take about two or three years for the world to end. You think so? Unless that asteroid it. hits in November. Well, you know, I mean, got okay. a shipping container all full of shit too. What? I was wonder if he's got a you got a shipping container all full of shit all ready to go there, Bree too. What do you mean? You know, uh, you you're talking like a uh, one of those uh, what do you call it? Preppers. Well, let me ask Preppers, you. there you go. Okay, you let me let me ask the panel this question: Where right now is the safest place? I know some. That's why I asked. Yeah. Where 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 right now is the safest place on Earth to be? Antarctica. New Zealand. <laughs> New Zealand? Antarctica. Uh, Antarctica? Plane. Antarctica, there's no COVID. Zero. Yeah. On the back of Kevin's Harley. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> nobody lives in Antarctica, though. Uh, yeah, no, yeah, there's like 250 what? people there. They have oh, a little town. Yeah, they have and a bunch of seeds. Yeah, but I don't think you want to live there. I mean, no. it's not livable, no. you know? Uh, but th there was some place I saw, I think, off the coast of South America that had, like, one case of coronavirus. And I think Greenland is is pretty sparse when it comes to... Um... Gualala only had one case. How about the Falkland Islands? Uh, nobody lives there. Nah, because then you got to worry about British invasions. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, that yeah. was so long ago. <laughs> I think I was in sixth grade. No, but I mean, exactly. <laughs> really, people right now who are on our uh, on our uh, chat, just tell me where where is the safest place on earth to be? Uh, well, it's, Lala, New Zealand. You know something? You know what's going to be the safest place to be right now? New York City. I was going to say Connecticut or Connecticut. Yeah, but you still can't go out and do anything. We had. Hawaii, I, mean, I don't know how many people. Uh, I don't know how many cases, how many deaths we had in Manhattan, but in all of New York State, three deaths yesterday. Infection rate of point seven, uh, point six two, I think it was something like that. Yeah, point six. Don't you have a lot of businesses that have closed there? Hmm. Don't you have a lot of uh, businesses, well, a lot of businesses there that aren't coming back? Well, yes, because they, they, you know, they couldn't take the strain of this. I know a lot of businesses that are surviving very nicely. There's a restaurant. A little, a little if you're safe from the virus, private, no, you're private. not necessarily safe from, you know, pitchforks and. Well, well, I mean, what <laughs> happened? You know, we had the worst infection rate, probably in the world here at one point. You know, and we managed to turn it around and have it go the other way. And oh, uh, yes. we are like the safe, the safest, the safest place probably. Uh, it, we're Fine, certainly the safest know. place in the country. Who are you talking to, Kathleen? Well, Sean shows me on um, uh, Amazon Prime Ab Fab, which you introduced me to, mm -hmm. which I fucking love. Right. So he goes, Mom, look, Ab Fab's free. Well, I, you know, I have all the DVDs. And then he goes, but you can watch it upstairs on your TV. Oh, he's getting a little independent now, huh? How old? Yeah, he's like 6'2". I'm six foot, but I can still kick his ass. How, how old is he now? He's 14. Wow. 
I, I didn't even, mm. I, I had already left the Bay Area by the time you got pregnant. Yep, because yeah. you left in 2003. Yeah. And you got knocked up. I got up knocked up in 05. In 05. Knocked up. 04. Alex wasn't taking any chances. <laughs> that's a, and that's what you get for blowing the Wi Fi. <laughs> oh, boy. I have a 14 year old boy at my house. That must if be. If you a... like to buy him, I'll sell him really cheap right now. <laughs> well, think about it, Alex. We though. would have a 21 year old. You and I. Yes. Yeah. Because at one yep. time she thought she was pregnant, mm -hmm. and and she came to me and she went, uh, I think I might be pregnant. And, and I was freaking out. You were freaking out. out. And what was my answer to you? Oh, you were happy. Yeah, I said okay. Yeah. You know, because I knew you would be a great mother. It did it wasn't a matter of anything else, but that no. you would be a great mother. Yep. And I knew Whether that if we if, stay together or not. If we didn't stay together, you would not deny me seeing the child no, or anything like that. Not. And you have proved yourself to be a great mother. Thank you know, you. As you raised the kid all on your own, and yep. you know, uh, uh, you're you know, you're my hero. Okay. Thank you. So that's a, a very good thing. I have a great deal of respect for single moms. You know, I think that it's a rough go, and anybody that lives up to it and does their job. God bless them and screw the dad who deserts them, you know. Yes, uh, John Larkin. I was raised by a single mother. Uh, she was 42 when I was born mm -hmm. and in 57, mm -hmm. and she raised me on her own working as a uh, coffee shop waitress in Silicon Valley. And she was able to buy a house in Sunnyvale in uh, the 60s on fucking... Uh, coffee shop wage w waitress wages. Yeah. Wow. Can't nice. do that anymore. Oh. No help from the father. Never met my father. You know. She yeah. did it all on her own. God bless. God bless uh, single moms. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, 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 look at me now. Uh, 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 <laughs> Josh has been kind of quiet tonight. Josh, any place you know of on the face of the earth where it's better to live and safe to live? I don't know where to go right now. Yeah. Probably about the same everywhere. About the same everywhere, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, I just start looking at the map. Let me bring up the map here. My corona. I know virus. where you could be. What? Where? You could be at the White House. That it, that's safe. <laughs> Maybe. You get tested every 15 minutes. Didn't they say, get, though? Didn't they say, you though? You don't that get a, nothing. Everybody spits on you, and you, everything's perfect. Didn't they say that a bunch of people who were at the... Uh, uh, yep. Where they were gonna hold the uh, Republican convention, came down yeah. with COVID. Yeah, yep. yeah, and these are glad they didn't go. Charles these Sanders. are Republican honchos. Uh, our uh, our our deaths in the United States, hundred eighty-one thousand seven hundred and sixty-seven. Yep. Yeah, uh, that's, uh, that's all over. That, that, that's not good. What? Wait a minute. Republican, it's all over. It's all over. Yeah, one of those was here. We just got one yesterday. What? A death. A death? 1,767. Look at that, folks. Look at that. There's the... Uh, yeah, we the, have eight now. Yeah. Uh, and uh, if I go to the... Uh, by election day. Let me bring this out. If we go to... Here's what's interesting. If, if we go to the map here again, let me... Put, show it to people again in fact let me make it bigger so that it uh uh so that it uh, is uh there we go here we go okay uh let me see here if i do this people can see it look at look at that folks see that see our area see the united states here see that no look at well you can't see it because i'm showing it to the audience damn it uh, but that look that's the united states it's almost all red Mm -hmm. Okay, almost all red. I mean, if I bring it in a little bit, you see there's some sparser areas, but the almost on our side of the country here, it's terrible. And then you go down into California and it's terrible. And you get up to, you know, Wyoming and the uh, other areas there and it's a little, it's a little better. But if we go to the U.S. statistics, okay, um... We have 181,776 deaths. 
uh, and we have a total of five million nine hundred thirteen thousand nine hundred thirteen cases. That's not good, is it? You know, and it, we are going up and we are kind of coming down, but it's not that good. And New York, which used to be the number one in the country for deaths uh, per day, is now down to, I don't know, I can't remember what place it's at, or cases. California has more cases than we do. Um, and uh, in California, by the way, you've had 12,805 deaths. So anyway, that's, Damn. That, that's the map, folks. Well, look at the, it's like me, Bob with weather, you know. Uh, anyway, so uh, uh, pretty good, pretty good. Everybody, uh, please do your part. Okay, wear a mask. It's a safe. You're thing. saying the strain in the West Coast is different than the strain in the East Coast, among other. There areas. is a belief that the strain that we got was different, okay, than the strain that the that the West Coast got. Because is that one more lethal, or just are they the same in lethality? Uh, well, uh, it was <clears throat> lethal to us because nobody was stopping travel into New York State. You know, yeah. so we got three million people here before somebody said, down in Washington, "Hey, maybe we should close travel from Europe." That was a month and a half of people coming here. Three million people. Rob, no, Robert knows what I'm talking about. And that's why we got hit so badly because we, number one, we got hit at the beginning of the pandemic when we knew very little about this and how to treat it and how you deal with it. And, and also because right. we got all these people coming into the country because China, oh, China's spreading the whole disease and they made a big deal out of that. And uh, uh, so we were, we were in, in trouble. You know, and that's why we got so many cases of deaths. Yes, Jeff. Well, I think you ought to think about the fact that the number of uh, subways and people on taxis and on trains. And well, we also what spread and it. And airports yeah. and, you know, just the variety of The people density of population. So close yeah. in density. Yeah. But if we had closed the border. If we had closed travel from Europe a month and a half earlier, that density would have been a problem, but it would have been less of a problem. I mean, we have that density right now, and uh, our governor felt that when he opened up the state and let things start to open up, like outdoor dining and things like that, and you know, whatever, that there was, he felt, going to be a peak upward, and they didn't know how much. They didn't expect that they were going to go down, down, down. They yesterday, I can't remember, do I have the statistic here? Do I have the mail here with uh, Cuomo's uh, uh, thing? Here it is. Uh, yesterday, uh, we did uh, a total of, uh, uh, let's see here. Yesterday, we total hospitalizations dropped to 478. That's hospitalizations for covid in the entire state, and there are 300 hospitals in the state. So that's about one and a half cases per hospital. Of the ninth, and here's how many tests we did yesterday, 97,826, 636 reported as positive, or 0.65% positive. Three straight weeks of an infection rate under 1% and a record low. Now, that, and we lost three New Yorkers. Oh. Here's the thing, that the CDC has been kind of begged by Trump to stop giving COVID tests because if we don't give COVID tests, you won't have this high COVID rate of people who have COVID. Well, you know, it's like saying if you go to your dentist and he doesn't do x-rays, you don't have cavities, you know? I mean, uh, uh, the fact of the matter is we did, what did, what did, I, what did I say, 90,000 yesterday? Uh, uh, in uh, 97,000, almost 100,000 tests yesterday and had the lowest amount of infection rate so far. So getting more of these numbers, perhaps the argument is the more you test, the lower the rate goes down. The so, more confidence you have for opening up, you know? Well, it gives you a, a snapshot, and they get these well, results God, back in a... Whole goal. What? The numbers that's might go goal. up, but the like, ratio You do a lot of change. tests and get nobody positive. That's what you want. Yeah, yeah. You know? yeah. 
So, so Trump don't understand that shit. Though. Yeah, well, I mean, the idea he that they, everything well, he just wants to cheat. Uh, uh, Cuomo ripped the CDC an asshole yesterday online, Ooh. saying, "How dare they?" They came out with a, a thing saying, uh, "If you have not been around some, if, oh, if you've been around somebody who has COVID, you don't need to be tested unless you have symptoms." Right. Yeah. Huh? That doesn't make what sense. What about people who are asymptomatic? But yeah. the CDC said that, and they said it because they were being pressured by the White House to slow down on COVID testing. Yeah. 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 You, so, you know, um, the, you know the, the, uh, the PR person that got uh, fired from the CDC? Yeah. That person came from One America Network, which is, you know, that's just a fucking oh, Russian... Man. No, 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 no. That's not Russian. That was. Uh, well, that, I, that, I know. But there that, are no. a lot, there, are, there are a lot of Russian propagandists on. No, there, no, though. no. You're thinking. You're thinking of uh, what was the uh, what was the uh, communist uh, network here in America? Do you remember RT? Uh, uh, Ray? RT? Uh, RT? Yeah, or, yeah uh, RT. Zero. RT was the communist. RT. Yeah. No, I know, but but the the dude one American network. Is spreading a lot of Russian propaganda. No, they're spreading a lot of Trump propaganda because he has bought and into Russian, it. He's bought yeah. into it. I know. And Russian propaganda, which Russian propaganda is, is pro-Trump because they want to, they want him back in because he's such an incompetent, stupid shit. I still say there's a P tape somewhere. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 He, I mean, he has made he's. I, can you ever remember him criticizing Putin for anything? Of course not. Putin. I mean, the latest thing is Putin had this guy poisoned. I, I guess he's still alive, but it had this yeah. journalist poisoned, yeah. and and there's not a word coming out of uh, out of him about that. No. You know. First, the Russians tried to delay his transportation to some yeah. other hospital or something Absolutely. because they wanted the. They, they want the poison to sort of dissolve in his body. So I think Germany or somewhere else, wherever he was going to be looked at, he wouldn't be able it, to tell it, if it was poison or not. But it he takes, still found out it was poison. It takes the poison three days to dissipate. Mm-hmm. Okay, that doesn't mean you, you're not sick from it, but right, it right. dissipates so that you can't trace it in the body. They held exactly. him for three days, and then they let him go to another country to be. Yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Uh, There's one row where they won't come after me because this is the uh, salons, yeah. the haircutters. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. <laughs> he has no I hair. I can safely walk here. You can, oh, <laughs> he uh, has no hair. Oh, really? I can safely walk down here. By the way, explain to people who are watching right now and, and came in and wondered what these pictures are going on down in the corner of our screen, where you are. Well, I'm uh, I'm in Kuala Lumpur, yeah, and uh, I'm walking around a lot of the places where tourists would go, but also shoppers. And I'm I'm probably the only I mean I'm the only foreigner I've seen today. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I'm in Sungai Way right now. Yeah. Uh, Sungai Wang, and uh, I was over at Lo Yat Plaza, mm-hmm. and I'll be heading over to Lot 10 and the Pavilion. The Pavilion is sort of uh, the largest shopping place in Kuala mm. Lumpur. There are two, uh, the Pavilion and KLCC. That's where the towers are. And so all these places are sort of connected. Uh, and so I'm looking for a place for lunch today. I know I can go to the Pavilion or KLCC because I know the place is there. But I'm trying to find uh, I'm trying to find new place. Let me let me, let me ask you something. Uh, uh, in the past, when you've t- taken your cameras around Kuala Lumpur and towns in that area uh we've seen some very gorgeous women but it yeah. seems like the even with the coronavirus on these places look somewhat empty are yeah. they more are they no, emptier than they usually right. are they are yeah yeah I and mean, there's no doubt about it um people are still you know worried about it yeah so you know they're, they're trying to be careful um, the thing is, is that I should be too, but it's just that, you know, after a certain amount of time, you do get tired of it. And I am, I do have my mask and I have my, uh, spray, my hand sanitizer. Yeah. And 
I believe that it's kind of like the flu in a way. Like, mm-hmm. I think that a healthy person could be exposed to a low amount, a low viral count, and they would still survive it. Like, and they may not notice. But don't say that because you, you, don't say that because you're not a doctor and you don't know that to be true. That's just your own well, personal theory. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm I'm not saying okay. that <laughs> as advice. What I'm saying is is that what we know about virus. Okay, d- let's put it this way: Have you lived with or stayed with somebody who has influenza, mm-hmm. and do you automatically get it? You know. I, no, but your chances are good that you will get it. Now, wait a minute. Hold on a second. A lot of people have their hands up. First, I'll go to you in a second, Kathleen, and then to Ray. But first, Brian has his hand up. Yes, Brian. Yeah, regarding the remark you all made regarding uh, the RT network, I do watch a considerable amount of programming on there via YouTube. And yes, it's 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 understood that it's received funding in part by the uh, Russian government, but and people bash them on account of that, which is you know it's, well, it's, it's not, fair. It's I mean, not funded in part by the Russian government. It is funded by the Russian government. It is. An, well, I don't see how it's all that different than from uh, you know organizations like. MSNBC or uh, they're not or they're not government. They, wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, Brian. Order. They're not they're not government run. In the case of RT, it is an arm of the of Russian government. Yeah, well, our media outlets oftentimes serve in the best interest of the citizens. That, that's, so that's another that's so another argument. That's an argument all to, another argument altogether. But the ownership of RT is Russian. Kathleen, what is a mall? And what purpose does it serve? (laughs) (laughs) Ours haven't been open for months. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, right. 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 What's that? Wait a minute. Aren't uh, aren't you going to... Hold hold it still so we can read Aren't you going to do something to fight the coronavirus? And what does he say? I am doing it. I am doing it. And just come back on that. Um... He's, it's all under control. It's all under control, right? Is that a t-shirt? And that is a T-shirt in Kuala Lumpur. That's not a T-shirt here in the United States of America. So, you know. That's not right. That's, yes, Ray. You want that, I just Alex? wanted to say, with regard to it's what a Bree's... medium. <laughs> oh, sorry. What? I'll buy it and what? ship it to you. You want that, Alex? Yeah, sure. I want one. <laughs> yes, yes, Bree. 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 With what, what, what regard to what Bree said, um, I, I just heard a report a couple of days ago where uh, this the idea uh, young people who just had very minor Hello. symptoms, sniffles, etc., are getting these long-term issues, neurological problems, digestive mm-hmm. problems, yeah. uh, anxiety issues, all kinds of strange things long-term, mm-hmm. even though their initial um, Symptoms were very light. Yeah, let me ask. And these, oh, and these yeah. were mostly well, I, young. But people. I never said anything. Uh, let me let me go back and just say, I believe that I can go out because I take I take necessary precautions. Number one, number two, we have a low, very low numbers here in Malaysia. Number three, everybody else is wearing a mask and taking precautions. Number four, I have to I have to log in every single place I go. No, you, you, for track you, and trace. Uh, if you're so like, if I'm ever, not saying like, hey, it's OK, everybody, just go, whatever. If no, ever, there's if, definitely serious yeah. ramifications. What I'm saying for me right now, yeah. I need to go out. It, it, my mental health is also important for me. So we each have to make our own decisions. But in the States, you're screwed because but, you yeah. never know if the guy next to you has it and doesn't care and doesn't wear a mask. You well, don't know if they well, use hand sanitizer. You that, don't know the, if the reason they've why, tracked and traced. The, the reason why you wear a mask is when there is not social distancing going on, okay? When there's not social distancing going on, you wear a mask to protect yourself and the other people wear a mask to protect you. And if you don't social distance, the mask then becomes effective. When you don't need social distancing, you can really pull the mask down, you know. Uh, it isn't necessary. but. For social distancing in, air, in situations where you cannot be socially distant, and that would be, I'd say, anywhere in New York City when I go traveling, if I go on a bus or I take a car or whatever, that I keep my mask on until I get to my location and then <laughs> at my location 
Uh, that's very funny there. I, is, does that actually work, um, Kathleen? Yes. You know, it, when I was at Costco, so I worked in the freezer building. We all yeah. had to wear masks, and I wore this. Yeah. And I remember a friend of mine who I call my abusive husband mm -hmm. ran up behind me, and he literally plugged these up, and I couldn't breathe because there's three gaskets in this. So when I breathe oh, so in, nice. the front gasket pops shut. When I breathe yeah, out, let me, the two other let gaskets me, pop let shut. Let me ask you a question. Is that one made for, for women? Because it's pink and... Uh, it's pink. <laughs> it's pink and yellow. And everybody in the building called me Bane because, you know, I'm of a course, bodybuilder and course. I'm six feet tall. Yeah. LG <laughs> has one of those Bane masks now that you yeah. can buy. Yeah. Uh, she, she does keep herself oh. in good shape. Show me your muscle. Alex, I gotta bug out my uh, look my at internet. That. Look at my that. internet is nice. going off. My roses so, are blooming. Okay, so we're getting rid of Bree. Okay, Bree, yeah, thank you. It's you, here. you you got did it at the right time. There are only three minutes left in the show. Ah, okay. Everybody wave goodbye I'll to Bree. I'll tune in on YouTube. Yeah. I have unlimited YouTube. Okay. Yeah. Bye bye. Uh, okay. Uh, bye -bye. but we'll be over by then. So I think I think yeah. what, what Ray was saying about the you know, the kids getting it or getting a light touch of it or whatever mm -hmm. and doing that. I mean, there's still so much stuff we don't know about it, but, you know, they go they go about it like, yeah, it's okay to catch it. And, you know, the young people, oh, we're, we're going to survive it anyways, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I still think that, man, they, they don't know what's going to happen. If they are having respiratory issues later, mm -hmm. you know, that could be really bad. So why do the people say, oh, well, we can have it. It's just like the flu. And, you know, they don't Not know yet. Yeah. yeah, and there are so many strains. Have you seen that website that shows yeah. all the strains? I can't understand it, but they've found hundreds and hundreds of strains. Wow. In this thing. So I wonder if people are getting reinfected then. Yep. Well, the reinfection thing that you read about uh, in, uh, in uh, it happened in foreign countries was that they think they were reinfected by a different strain of COVID. Mm -hmm. There's so many of them. Yeah. So many strains. I mean, yeah, there's, there's, there's actually great. 30 we're dealing with. Something Didn't like they find yeah. uh, they had another case? I'm sure it'll go up. Uh, and another case, what? They had another case of uh, somebody getting reinfected in Nevada. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I think nice. it's because of the strains. It's like that's that's why you can catch the cold over and over again. They're different yeah. form, forms of it. Wow. Yeah. And, the and I think the cold is a COVID or a, yeah. Form is a COVID, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But anyway, so um, in the time we yeah. have left here, uh, what, what are you doing this weekend, Charlie? Anything interesting? Yeah, I'm going to uh, scope out my new car. Oh, you're going to go looking Ooh. for a new car? Yep. Yeah. What are you thinking? What are you, yesterday. what are you thinking of getting? I already got it. I got it yesterday. Oh, okay. I got a Chevy Malibu. Oh, oh good. Nice. Those Chevy are nice. Malibu? What, what are you doing this Chevy weekend, Robert? Malibu. Anything interesting? 2020 Chevy Malibu. Oh, my God. Robert, doing anything interesting this weekend? No. No, frankly. Okay. I, I just want to ask uh, Kathleen something. Uh, have you kept your kid indoors pretty much or in the, in the area? Yes. Yeah? Wow. So it's been a long time since he's been out romping around. I mean, you know, he'll go with me to the grocery store, to Home Depot or wherever, but, you know, we're both masked up. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, good. Good, good, good. And uh, Josh? You know, he, he's really happy about not having to go to school. <laughs> he truly hates the kids around him yeah. because they're such a-holes. Uh, good. He's doing virtual, virtual school? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. they're sending over virtual assholes to be with him. <laughs> so, you know, uh, but anyway. Hey, listen, uh, Josh, going to have a good weekend this weekend? Try to. Okay. Brian, good seeing you. Brian, other Brian. Uh, Brian with the uh, with the kids and the beautiful wife and uh, who we're all jealous of. Uh, uh, you have a, have a nice weekend, too. Charlie, thank you. Rob, thank you. Thank you to Josh. Thank you to Brian Ludwig. Thank you to the other Brian. Uh, near Brian, uh, Brian, 68 days to vote. Okay, Brian Neary. Uh, and, and, of course, uh, Kathleen. Thank you, Kevin. And uh, thanks to uh, John Larkin and uh, Ray. Good to see you here. Good to see Jeff here. And, of course, thanks to Bree 
for that wonderful tour of a mall in Kuala Lumpur. Everybody, give yourself a big wave goodbye, and I'll wave back at you, okay? There they go, ladies and gentlemen. Bye-bye. Okay. That's our citizen panel for tonight. Uh, having a lot of people here and a lot of people watching. God, it's good when you're having fun. Anyway. Listen, Jack Bishop is next. He comes along with the intersection over most of this same gab net. Uh, and um, uh, it'll be uh, 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 on Skype will be the call. So he'll be taking calls on Skype. He'll give you all that information when you, when you listen, which is right after this. Meanwhile, we're going to take a couple of days off. We'll be back Tuesday night, 1030. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, if you see her, Tell her I love her. And as always, stay safe and wear a mask, okay? Good night, everybody.